Hello everybody and welcome back to How to Survive Rome Total War SPQR. This is actually going to be a post commentary recording as I recorded this in advance and forgot to add audio. So um, basically where we left off was Carthage was about to attack one of my cities in Sicily. But remember thanks to what I said in my other video, send a general down to fight because this is going to happen. Now what I always do is I cut cut on attempt the night attack just to re destroy the reinforcements and then we start to fight now I use the same formation that I use almost every single time there's usually no variance in what I do with the formation as long as there's a standard legion three triarii, five pastati, five principes so on and so forth <clears throat> now what I noticed here was that the army got split so I was like right where the mouse shook. I was deciding should I charge forward and hit the sec the f side that's weaker because it has elephants still, but it's an extremely weak side and I can get rid of it quickly. Then reform on the opposite side of the mountain, forcing them to have to split again possibly, or it would give me just enough time to reform and get ready to fight them. So I was contemplating that, which is why my units are running right now. But eventually I decide not to because it just becomes too much to want to do that. But anyway, while this is going on, let me talk about something else real quick. I'm thinking about doing other Let's Plays. I just want to know your feedback on this. I'm thinking of playing Jagged Alliance back in action too. I know the originals are more popular, but it's still a fun game. And also games like Mountain Blade, I'm terrible at it, but it'll be fun. And okay, by this point, sorry I'm jumping back, at this point I noticed that there was a hill. And it'd make more sense for me to defend that hill than it would be to fight them on an even plane. So, and also in a force, where my Pila would, my Velites and my Pila would not have an advantage. So, I noticed that they're relatively close and I zoom in because I note soon enough at least that they start running so right here they're not I don't know when it happens they run soon enough though yeah there you go yeah they start running and that lets me know it might not be a good idea to keep walking now the reason why the infantry keeps stopping is because those elephants are running and knocking them over but the cavalry can't be knocked over yet. So I noticed they're running and I decide, okay, run. And then I cut it off so I can fast forward and back to the actual flight. Now, the first thing I noticed, and you probably noticed this too, they're coming at a diagonal. <laughs> so yes, cluster, it's gonna be bad. The initial start of this fight, I was not sure how to react to this. So I kind of just, like left units alone but I did know that I need to get rid of those elephants and I should and not should protect the um, velites that I'm gonna send around let's see I am on the right flank you see Triaria I got attacked by the cavalry because I was setting up stuff on the left flank didn't pay attention but fortunately they didn't get hurt too badly but if you look they went from 163 to 149 in a single charge and I paused it there just so I can click on the army uh, I send my cap cav over to help the um, Triaria just because of what was happening. And I send my other Equites around on the flanks. I knew that someone was going to charge on the left side. That's why I sent my Triaria and Principes over there. But I'm sending my Velites too so they can take out the elephants that are further back and haven't attacked yet. Now I'm noticing my left side because it got boggled down getting attacked like crazy but I really don't want to move my left side over because of those elephants so my focus right now is to get rid of the elephants with the um, velites and once that's done with take care of take care of the actual infantry so I keep like I said I keep reinforcing that side and as this happens I noticed that their general broke through the center so I said forget it charge their general so now I'm attacking their flank. 
I'm attacking infantry flanks with cavalry because cavalry can't be launched off their horses as easily. Like, that's a counter for elephants. You just use loose formation with them and their general dice. But the same thing, principle keeps applying. I use the same formation as you see. And despite, like, I'm losing a lot of soldiers just due to the fact I've never fought at a diagonal like that with a threat still as big as an elephant. So thanks to that elephant's threat, I kind of hesitated. And also thanks to just not seeing that coming. Bad micromanagement on my part. I'm not going to deny that. I could have done better. But anyway, as you can see, elephants are not defeated, but they've ran. Now, I didn't notice that myself until a couple of few seconds later. When I start realizing, hey, they're still alive, everyone attack them. So I send my equites after that light infantry who is routing. They, and those infantry units right there engulfed something. <laughs> what did they engulf? I have no idea. And I'm also noticing my infantry is chasing after those guys and they are running right into elephants. So I tell all my velites to hurry up and attack. And the remaining infantry hit that final unit that's on my right flank. Now I did have that cavalry fabric fight cavalry on cavalry fight and we were winning shockingly but just because of the history of equites i know for a fact they don't win so i sent the equites off to fight i mean i sent some triaria to back them up well at least i believe i did that in this video It'd be smart well i'll figure that out later so now right for right now i'm just picking up routed units and there was a whole thought process going on. It was just most of it was like, what the heck? I've never been attacked at this angle. Or what the heck? How am I gonna counteract this? But again, worrying about that wasn't gonna help me much. I just kinda let things roll. Like I didn't plan on attacking that skirmisher unit with the Velites, but once they got engaged, I just said forget it, attack. I know for a fact Velites are actually pretty good in combat. Not against infantry, but against other skirmishers, they can hold their own pretty well. So, archers are fighting Cav. They're gonna lose that fight. I got some Principes or Triarii charging after some infantry unit. Over here, there's two fights happening, and one is keeping the other from flanking. So, I, I really can't do much about that. So, I sent some skirmishers after the ones that are fighting my Velites just so that way I don't lose that many casualties and I think the Velites actually route with them soon enough and let's see what happens from here is basically we're picking up routed units but I'm also make, paying attention to those elephants right there because they never actually routed they ran so that means that they at any point in time could decide I want to turn around and fight and sure enough they turned around and fought so now that my Velites are done with that fight, I basically just took off with my Triaria and Cav to get them out of the way and told my Velites to hurry up and take care of these elephants while the Equites, excuse me, while the Equites take care of the um, skirmishes that they just fought. Now I'm also noticing too, there's a unit turning around. I'm not sure what it is right this second. But I do know it turns around to try to fight. And I don't really bother to counteract it. I just try to get rid of these elephants. <sighs> and as you can see, it's not going well. <laughs> Fortunately, the elephants are not exactly at the highest morale. So they actually do get scared. And I believe they eventually wrap. So... Well, this is happening because basically this is just picking up of the, the routing part and me picking up units. I'm going to explain some stuff that my previous video kind of got screwed over on. It's basically, it's really simple. With cities, turn the taxes to the highest. Either it's turned it to the highest where they got population growth, no growth at all, or minus 0.5. Never more than minus 0.5. Because in this game, you can't exactly siege extremely quickly and take over cities that you'd be able to make up that population loss if you just enslave those people but if you have it at 0.5 it's usually not that fast of a, grow, a drop 
a drop rate and usually you can capture a city in time to enslave the population and boost the population of whatever city was negative that might sound confusing so I'm gonna actually specify with cities so let's say uh, Messina had negative five had 10,000 people at a negative point zero five they would eventually start losing like one peasant a day but a term where as if it was at one they'd lose probably two or three and the number that they'd lose would keep increasing whereas at point five it usually won't it won't get above five but if you enslave a city of five thousand just like that you've distributed five thousand into let's say seven cities well five cities i don't think i have more than five by this point so one thousand people in the one city now simple or you can uh oh wait i already sorry used all three requirements uh once you've done that build a mine and i think it's Ar aridium i am bad with the names and also i can't remember which one it is just like it's the only one that you can build mines with on the very first turn build them so once you've built the mines in that one city um what you do from there is like I said you've selected all your cities they should be at high taxes um, for one city I say make it different and that's Ganua build walls walls will improve the law for one thing it won't prove tra improve trade that city you're not gonna really worry about trade you're gonna worry about building up its defenses first reason being is the Gaul like to attack it the most so cover your bases and build up that city's defenses eventually you can get it to a point where you don't need to babysit it with the legion but town watch that early getting attacked that straightforward can't handle it it's too much like it can be done but it'd be extremely hard and rather than making this extremely extremely hard on a game that's already rather hard just simplify it a little so now that that's so once you have that taken care of you've built you've built the walls you have the city you built the walls in Yanua have highest taxes that you can get it to um, there's something unique about this fight real quick that I'm gonna explain notice how many ca kills the second highest person has 394 is the second highest the highest is from Equites. 779 kills i believe that's like double the second highest nope nope almost double though 788 <laughs> that would have been almost double so okay real quick i'm gonna explain this real quick about merc mercs uh mercs are expensive as crap in this game sometimes they can be worth it in terms of calf if you're in the north replace them if you're in the east replace them <laughs> If you're in the eastern areas, like where Persia is, sit, um, uh, 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 crap, I can't remember their names, but the orange ones right there, go the, uh, replace the art horses with those horses, the, the mercenaries from that area. If you're in Africa, do the same thing. Right here, I'm replacing my slingers because if you look at the stats, it was like 4 and 24 for my slingers and 8 and 34 or something like that for the, uh, um, mercenary slingers now granted yes they have more experience but the fact is they still will do more damage too so uh, the secondary reason why you should bring a general here is because Spartans attack too while they didn't attack that turn because there were only two Spartans uh, I ended my turn and then I got attacked and fortunately there's all of like two or three Spartans in the city right now but had it this, I'd have waited until they wanted to attack me there would have been about seven or eight Spartans would have been bad so this fight is gonna be straightforward um, straightforward despite me not noticing that one of my units is actually at 46 compared to being at hundred and sixty three like the others <laughs> I didn't catch that but anyway um, since this fight is gonna be pretty straightforward I'm gonna tell you what I'm about to do my missile units are gonna target the Spartans that's really it <laughs> The strategy is to get rid of the Spartans while destroying the morale of the rest of the army. That's pretty much it. 
no other purpose. But anyway, um, once you have your cities taken care of off the first turn, your second turn, um, what you want to do is try to get rid of Hannibal or Theophanes during not your first turn, but like, how can I explain this? The first set of turns, like including when you end your turn, everyone has their first turn going in, that turn. I'm not sure how to really explain this, I'm bad at that. But anyway, during that little first turn segment, you should have one of the two armies beaten. During your second turn on, you can just stall on the one that you really don't want to fight or just do dirty tactics, like I said. There's a little gapping right there that um, where you put both of your armies, well, one of your armies, if you follow how I did this, and you can just sit there and build a fort and sit in the fort. <laughs> this will force Theophanes or Hannibal, if you didn't fight him, to siege. You can just keep attacking him at every chokehold. Because usually he will try to siege and use the elephants. You can try to get rid of them with the relatives. Um, I've tried that and like in two of my attempts where they crash, my game crashed fighting Theophanes and I beat him. Um, he attacked me like that and both times I failed. <laughs> I failed using my relatives, trying to send them out there because Cav attacked them and I went from 163, it wasn't 180, it was actually at around 160, 162. Um, and drop down to 43 so yeah bad bad move on my part thought I could sneak it in there in time but I couldn't they didn't even attack they sat there in melee combat so I tried to retreat them in and they still stayed in melee combat it was nasty business but um anyway so once you have your setup taken care of with your cities you work on the combat and in combat case like I said Theophanes Hannibal you attack one or you let them attack you normally if you it's better if you just end your turn and let them attack you because only one will attack you whereas if you charge straight in you're having two fights in one turn and unless you can have like a 100 kill victory a victory where they only kill 100 of your guys or so it's gonna be a problem because you're gonna have a deplete you're gonna have at least one depleted unit and while you can beat them with the one with some depleted units, it's gonna be a struggle. And I guess, you know, also consider that I am taking this from my point of view, and I, like I said, I've only beaten the Ophanes once, and that was during my last play, so I have no real experience against fighting him. I use the same formation. The only uh, advice I could give is to um, get a hill if you can. Because he only has one elephant, let your Velites fight the one elephant. Once they eliminate it, let the Velites attack the hoplites. Um, send your calf to hit the skirmishers if you can, or actually send your calf to back up your Triarii, because I think the calf that Hannibal has is tough. Uh, not Hannibal. The Elfenis has is tougher. I think he has round shields, but I think he also has some, like, German... Uh, why do I keep saying German? I mean Gallic. Barbarian calf. Um... Yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of that. I'm, that's the only advice I could give against him because I've never actually beaten him in open field combat. I've beaten him in sieges, never open field. Um, let's see. To your north, you have one legion that's just like standing there. Do not do what I do in my let's play and send him to the right. There's a mountain splitting the uh, map. One side of it has Gnu, the other side doesn't it doesn't have any cities it just leads straight to the gall cities do not be the one who's aggressive like me and try to send him towards that because you're just gonna have to turn him back around why because the gall don't attack for two turns technically turn one they move their soldiers turn two is when they actually perform a siege they give you well no 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 three turns turn one they do nothing turn two they move their soldiers turn three they start sieging and they always go for Ganua. No matter what you do, they always siege Ginua. So they will siege Ginua, and what happens from there usually is that if you don't have a legion there or your troops aren't that great inside Ginua, they will be taken. It will be taken from you. Like, 
I've frequently seen my friends do this at least. They lose Ganua and then they're sitting there trying to take it back. And I've seen it in a couple of other people's Let's Plays too. You see them fighting Ganua and I mean you'll see them trying to take back Ganua when they had it in the first place. Which I mean for the sake of a Senate mission that'd be a good idea like lose Ganua let Senate give you that mission to take Ganua again. Because they give you that in the very first turn of the game, which is impossible to do. You have to see. But anyway, um, what was I saying? Kind of lost my train of thought there. Oh, send the legion to the Ganua, so that way the barbarian horde that attacks it, um, you can beat it very easily. Usually, it takes the same formation that you've seen me use against the barbarians, which part three, I believe, has that on it. Um. So if part three has it, you can actually just study what I do. And also, I if you want, I can just do a straight custom battle. Creating, a simu simulating both the armies. And showing you a little more in detail what I do to make sure I beat the units. Because some of it is thought process, but others is pretty common sense. Like literally just watching with the, germ with the ball, the goal, not the ball, do, you have an advantage. Um, <clears throat> what else is good to know? Um, after you beat the Gaul, actually, when they're trying to take your city, after you beat them, turn back around, uh, send your general forward and try to take the city from them. It's a two for one, but for a completely different reason. And here's the reason. For one thing, they will still try to attack you from that same little path. If you're taking it, now you can destroy the armies that are trying to take the city from you while the city's rebuilding and all the other good stuff. So, once that happens, so as that's happening, your general's getting more experience. Um, I forgot w if they changed this or not, but I don't think they did. The loyalty system is still set up, so you don't want your general fighting too much or he'll become, like, too good, so to speak, and he'll eventually decide to rebel. So put a cap limit on what generals you fight with. You never want to use the same general like 50 times over. Like, I'm doing a poor job of this right this second, which I promise I'll do a better job. Um, I just said a year. Whoops. I bet you that sounded awesome. I just said a year in which um, 